love the classic steady cam used in the original Rocky. I want to ask you, when you were filming those fight scenes with Carl Weathers, when you were fighting right. Creed, how do they make those look so realistic? The punches themselves, is it angles? How do you look like you're connecting with their faces? Sometimes you get so close because you've choreographed it to the point where you, you have literally learned his, his uh, I guess his ability, his reach, and uh, autonomically you kind of know <laughs> what he's, he's going to do. And then again, sometimes you get hurt because the gloves Carl and I were using, we didn't know much better back. Those are those eight ounce lethal gloves. But the, the angles, of, of course, provide a, a sense of realism. But every now and then, you, as you see in the slow motion, you just have to take a few. Oh, my God. That's why I couldn't wait for Michael to take one and get clocked. I said, <laughs> now you're a member of the family. But if, like, if, for example, if we were to sell a punch on camera here, like, how would I have to angle myself? Like, how would I have to go by your face looking like I'm hitting you? Well, actually, you would just come towards me okay. if that's the camera. All right. And right here. And the whole point is me selling. <laughs> And then, and so then. it's much about the person taking the punch. The selling is the hardest thing ever. Uh, that's why Carl Weathers was so, so good. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dolph was good, but Carl was a savant at taking punches. That's why I couldn't wait to bring his character back, even if it's in the current in reincarnation of Michael B. Jordan. You look back at the classic Rocky step sequence, it's one of the most iconic moments ever, but the way that was shot, you going up those stairs, can you talk about where you were that day in your mind, how they shot that, when you're going up, how many takes was the actual going up thing, and where, like, mentally, where were you? Well, that was kind of a, a mechanical miracle coming together. Also, it was just luck in, in, in uh, legalese. In other words, the police were not around. We were doing that nine unions, so I was trying to grab as many uh, moments as I could before the union caught up to us. And the orange was... was, it was Everything was just haphazard, <laughs> jumping out of the van and running past the ship. That just was a one take and let's get out of here. And I had to run up and down those steps or hung around those steps when I was 12 years old. So I thought, you know what, let me just finish it up. There's something about these steps reminiscent, believe it or not, by one of the most influential characters. When I was young, I watched Steve Reeves. Yeah. Steve Reeves pulled down the tower, which is very symbolic and very reminiscent of what the museum looks like, the pillars and the columns. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to kind of do an homage and run up these steps? And that's sort of what influenced you to get you into the films anyway, was this, this look. And I was going to carry my dog up to show how strong Rocky's but once I lifted that bull mastiff at 130 pounds, I got three, <laughs> I got three steps. I started to hear my disc compress. I said, Sorry, honey, I love you, but sit, fetch, go. I'll, I'll do this one. And so we had a man at that time, a local Philadelphian who had invented the Steadicam. And it was this large, uh, kind of unwieldy machine with string hanging from it and washers. But the man was six foot seven. So he could run up these steps sideways as fast as I could forward. And that in the audience, I don't really think we're aware of what they were seeing. It, the magic was happening, but it was happening so fast that how'd they do that? How, how did they not bounce around? And that was the beginning of the uh, steady cam. And here, 40 years later, it's been used to great effect in this by Ryan. Right. Now, I love the fact that you've played this character now seven times. And you <laughs> think about how incredible he is as a human being, what he's been through, the emotional qualities of him. But you've spanned this over so many years. What aspects of Rocky have you taken into your real life? Like, as we're sitting here today, you're an actor, but is, yeah. is any of Rocky with us right now? Is any of him with you? Uh, a, a certain aspect of it, yes. I mean, there. I wish I was as moral as in that because he, he's his 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 personality is so embracing, so humble that even though he's being made to look like a fool, he won't embarrass you, he won't uh, seem to uh, cause any, any sort of up, uh, indignation on his part. So I don't know if I have that particular gear, because I could tend to be a little thin-skinned at time, even, even with self-criticism. And not, it doesn't have to be imposed by you, I can do it on myself. But there, I, I think that I, I, feel, I feel for people. And that helps when you write a screenplay when you can be empathetic and, and still maintain that kind of uh, identification with people less fortunate than you.
I'm a big fan of how films are made. I love Thank steady you. cam. I love the way films are shot. I want to ask you because the fight scene that you have with the son, the trainer of the son, the second major fight in the movie. Hey, what about it? What's up? Is that really a one shot? Yeah, man. Talk to me how they pulled that off. That shot blew my mind. And it was something that me and Ryan talked about um, from the beginning before we actually, you know, made the film. We were trying to figure out, you know, ways to like make it as different as possible. You know, how we're going to shoot these fight scenes, you know, different than any other fight film. And I'm a big fan of Warners, you know, a big fan, and you know, I. I, I tried to push as many as I could in Fruitville, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, can we get this in the water? Let's try, let's try. <laughs> and it was it was some that, you know, we you know, we weren't able to get due to lack of whatever. But on this one, he he accomplished it. It's like months and months of just prep, man, and, and rehearsing and you know, and, and learning the choreography seamlessly and working with Ben, our our camera guy, and 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 you know, and just working it out over and over again. And then we only had eight takes to to get it done, and when he had time for eight takes, and I think it's the full two rounds. It's the full uh, two yeah. rounds of the fight, which yeah. is insane yeah, to watch. Yeah. When you're selling punches on camera, I know you took a couple to the face. I'm assuming at some point, but how? What is the art of selling it? Like, if we, if we were to try, it, like, how would I make it look like I'm actually hitting you? It all depends on where the camera is. You know right. what I'm saying? You got to block line of sight, and then you know you just gotta you know you gotta throw it to the opposite. You know what I'm saying? Side of where the camera is, and, and then it's your job to not go too soon. You know, it's rather it's rather too late to like react to it. It's better to go late than too early than, than too soon. What were like? Was there any particular moment where you took a punch on accident that just like threw really you down? Yeah. I mean, yeah, during the last fight, you know, it was pretty. It was it was it was pretty intense because at that point you got prosthetics. You know, you're closing up one eye. Your your depth perception is completely off. You know, especially when you're trying to read punches and it's yeah, it throws off everything. So. We didn't get a chance to rehearse that much with the prosthetic on. In, in hindsight, I probably should have put like an eye patch on or something like that. Yeah. When they have these amazing shots of you literally getting decked and falling to the ground, oh, there's man. one of them where you spit all this blood and, mm -hmm. and what is that for real? Like, is it like a mixture of like red dye and water? Oh, the blood itself. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like a probably like a sugar-based something. I don't know. They just pour it in your mouth and you spit it out. Yeah, it's like you know you mix it up with water because you don't want it to be too like you know, <laughs> thick, you know, where it doesn't look like you know real blood. But you you didn't want to sell it too much, so you put a little water and mix it up with that and just kind of like kept it in there. And yeah. Took a real punch and it was just you know. That's insane. Oh yeah, I love Ryan so much. I think you two are like the next Scorsese, De Niro kind of thing. Just like you, I, I want to see you work together more and more and more because I love the what he pulls some people emotionally. I think it's is Stallone's best performance. The moment in the locker room when you find the yeah. the disease that that is the best thing he's ever done in my opinion. Yeah. So I want to ask you, you you played uh, the character of Fruitvale Station, which was unbelievable. Yeah. As we're sitting here today, I mean, you play emotional characters. Do any of them stay with you? Like, is, is Oscar still at all with you For as sure. we sit here? Th that's the one that probably sticks with me, you know, the most out of anybody is, uh, is Oscar because it was such a personal thing, you know, for me being a young black man and just kind of like living in, you know, this world where, you know, you know, police brutality is a real thing. And, um, you know, so many stories like Oscar Grant throughout the world that don't get a chance to have that light shined on them, uh, on that story. So to be able to kind of like, you know, turn that into art and, you know, and, uh, and put it out there in the world for people to see is like, you know, definitely something that I, I care about. But yeah, Oscar stays with me. You know, I got a chance to, you know, meet it and get to know his family. And, um, you know, that just doesn't go away. I just noticed this. You have a tattoo right here on yeah. your arm. That's also in the film. It is in the film. So sometimes they cover up people's tattoos. Can you talk about why why the character would have the tattoo? I know. Well, I had to sort of make that up because I was inclined to cover it. I just assumed that we were going to, and 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 then Ryan really connected to it for her and what really is it? liked Can I it ask for her. It it's the word yes. Yes. Okay. It's oh the word wow. Yes. And then we ended up actually, if you watch the movie again, the first time that Adonis comes into her apartment, there's the word yes. Now, obviously, we meet your character at a certain part in her life. Mm -hmm. We have we don't really know much about her backstory unless what she tells Michael B. Jordan's right. character. And I'm wondering, what are things about her that you built in yourself that weren't in the script? Like, do you know her favorite foods? Oh or my her gosh, color? tons of things. What do you? Yeah, what would you that's know? That's the way Ryan works. So he he would send a bio of his ideas. So I knew when Bianca was born. I knew her parents' names. I know where they're from. I mean, for us, it was very important that because she's a Philly girl, that she was a very specific Philly girl. So, you know, she's part Italian, she's part Puerto Rican, her parents, you know, one of her parents grew up in a place called the Golden Block, so I spent a lot of time here in the Golden Block. Um, we knew she went to a Quaker school, for example. I mean... This is it, all stuff you built in? Oh, yeah, it's, it's very specific. <laughs> there are a lot of Bianca facts, so I could, I could 
like email you them. There's please do <laughs> email me anytime. The accent because I, I feel like you nailed it. I mean, because the Philly accent is so interesting because you it's meet so somebody specific, from Philly yeah. and only certain words say, sound it. So what words were like the most challenging? I know you at the screen last night you said the Johns. John, thing. yeah. Well, that's just a, a slang, a turn of phrase. But Philadelphians have a weird thing with this the A sound, um, and depending, especially in, like North Philly girls. So instead of saying like. I'll call you right back. They say, I'll call you right back. Huh. It's a very interesting thing, but I had help, and I became very good friends with the two women that do my hair, and I had to redo my hair a lot in the course of the film. So we'd be, you know, sat chatting for seven hours. They were my Philly liaisons and helped me quite a bit. The scene when Michael does the second fight in the film with the trainer's son, was that really one shot? Yes, sir. How did you pull that? That was the most mind-blowing. <laughs> it was two rounds. I thought you maybe you were doing it like Birdman style, where you were cutting behind people's backs. Nah, How did you do it? Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the fighting was the same. It was the same deal. I mean, we just we just ran it. We just ran on one. You know, um, <laughs> like we we had a really great, really great local uh, camera operator, Ben Seminoff. He's amazing. Um, my cinematographer, Mike Alberti, uh, who's really you know who's really really game. She she's she's awesome and kind of game for any any kind of challenge. You know, um, and. Uh, our, our, our stunt coordinator Clayton Barber was really great, you know. With the, you know, we, we kind of came up with the idea. To, was it steady cam? To, to do it. Yeah, it was steady cam. <laughs> that scene was steady cam. Yeah, so our steady cam up. Uh, soon as soon as he got hired on, he started taking boxing classes just on his own. You know what I mean? So the first day I met him, he was like, "Yeah, I've been taking, been taking boxing classes, man. I figured it could help, you know, uh, get get you know get into the ring, get my footwork right." And uh, and, he, and he was he was he was just a beast, man. The whole movie, he was uh, he was all over the place, and with that. You know, um, we just we just did a lot of rehearsals. We got the choreography right, and then uh, and then he would be in the ring. You know, um, you know, going going uh, you know, you know, trying to get into the best places where we can get the, we can get the most we can get the most uh, dynamic range out of the, out of the, out of the coverage, and also make sure all the punches are connected. You know, so so um, but yeah, it was it was, it was one. one I'm geeking out, man. That was amazing to watch. <laughs> you're dealing with an emotional story here, but also Fruitvale was a very emotional story mm -hmm. as well. But you're telling two different kinds of stories, and I'm wondering, like, do you, do, do you bridge that emotional quality from Fruitvale into this, and like, do you try to carry over that same emotional depth, even though it's a very yeah, different storyline? Yeah, yeah, for, for for sure. Like, um, for, for me, I love to, I love to feel stuff when I go when I go to when I go to see movies, um, and and I, and I definitely. Um, I'm looking for for all the emotional depth in, in each character, for each arc in each character. You know, when, when writing something, and in this, uh, I, f I found it to be a great opportunity to to explore, um, to explore these these really personal uh, themes that people can relate to, while at the same time, you know, dealing with these characters that are kind of almost like mythological. You know what I mean? Like uh, there's a mythology to Rocky, there's a mythology to to Apollo. You know, I think Sly knew that when he wrote him and giving him a name like, you know, giving him a name like Apollo Creed. You know what I mean? So. So um, you know, it, it was for me. It was it was it was great because because it works on this it works on this, this 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 macro level. But I was very interested in the in the in the, in the conversations between you know the, you know Adonis and Rocky in in in, in, in Paulie's bedroom, for instance, or, or yeah. in, in locker rooms like you talked about, or, or the conversations between Adonis and and, and and Tessa and Tessa. I mean Adonis and Bianca in her bedroom. You know these these, these personal moments. Uh, that kind of that kind of build on and, 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 and show who we are as people, you know, just as much as when he steps into a ring in front of a hundred thousand crazy, you know what I mean, yeah. <laughs> UK UK soccer fans, you know, uh, but but you know that was kind of what, 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 what interested me the most about this about this movie about how how it could work how it could work both ways and at the same time be just as emotional as as as, as Fruva it was. You're 29 years old. Yes, sir. You're behind a camera. Yes, sir. Stallone's. Taking your direction, <laughs> dude. I mean, first of all, that's the most incredible thing I've ever heard in my life. You think about that for a second. But talk about your mindset. I mean, I know you're directing, you're telling a story, mm. but you obviously have to be freaking out that Stallone is acting out your dialogue and a scene that you directed. Talk about where you are mentally in that moment. I, mean, I, I can't think about it like that. You know, I, yeah. I just, I just, I just got to look at it as work. You know, um, <laughs> but it's still it's Rambo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, with 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 with, with Sly at that point, by the time we were, by the time we were filming, I spent a lot of time around him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and 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 he's he's very self-deprecating. You know what I'm saying? Like he's <laughs> he, he's cracking jokes, making making everybody comfortable all the time. You know, um, and he he he, he has a because uh, because Sly kind of came into the he came into the game. Very young and, and people kind of doubting what he was what he was doing. So 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 with him, he was kind of like the best person to to 
to to to be cool with giving me this opportunity. You know what I mean? He never made me he never made me feel like, hey kid, what are you doing here? <laughs> you know, never. You know what I mean? He had all the right in the world to 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 do that. With him, it was all about the work. You know what I mean? It was all about it was all about let's 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 do the, let's do the best thing possible. And, and with him, with, with, with Sly respects because he's he, he's got a great work ethic. So if if you can match that, you know what I mean, or exceed it, you know you'll have you'll have his you'll have his respect. You know because because he's gonna come to set with he's gonna come to set with pages of work. For five, you know he might have a five page scene, but he's gonna come to set. He's gonna be like, hey Ryan, this is what I was thinking. You know what I mean? I was thinking about this here, that there, that there. You know you know what, what were you thinking? And you got to be able to match match that and have answers to his questions. And then once you once you're there with him, you know what I mean, he'll be ready to knock it out of the park. Do whatever do whatever you do whatever you want. You know, um and and, and he's got such a such a such an energy for somebody his age and such a uh, such a willingness to get it to to, to, to to get it right that that it was really, really inspiring. And, and he him, Mike and Tessa, they kinda fed off of each other.